everyone, and welcome back to the Travel and Tourism Podcast, my first season. I am very excited again today because my guest has been on the show before, but his story is so extensive and so great that he agreed to come back a second time to finish where we left off. And if you recall, we left off him as a chief of sports in Sonora Bay, Mexico. He is the Bahamian sensation, my friend, the one and only Hansel Moss. Hey, Hansel, how are you, sir? Welcome back. Hey, what's going on? The one and only Greg. What's up? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, there is only one, one, but man, you, 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 you're the legend, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, I know, we all legends, man, in our own way. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, thanks so much for 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 coming back on because I, I couldn't fit a story like yours in one hour. It's just it's it's impossible. So thank you so much for taking the time and coming back on. The pleasure is mine, brother. So where we left off, sir. You were chief of sport. You be, finally became chief of sport. You should have should have been chief of sport earlier. And Sonora yeah. Bay. Now I've had I've had two guests on this show that you know very well that tell the story of how they met you while they were they were going they were doing a, a tour to Australia, but they stopped in a club in Morea. You may recall Jenner and Cheese and well Hammer. Hammer's not even on a show, but Hammer is part of this story. So I'd like to hear it from uh, from your point of view because I think Cheese, whose episode just aired, uh, left some important details out. Is that right? Absolutely, because I listened to it and. This is exactly the, how we met. So, you know, with the GM show, we always do it. I always did it. I invented it. I was the first one to do it. We at the World was always the finale of the GM show. And uh, this is one of the things in Club Med now, don't even do anymore, and they don't pay no attention to it, but was, for me, we never put anything on stage as good as the GM show. Even the horrible ones, the people love them. So I needed three people. Bruce Springsteen, Kenny Loggins, and Steve Perry. And I saw these three young guys walking towards me, you know, and I go, man, great. I got what I want now. So I walk up, I say, guys, I need you for the show tonight. And they go, oh, no, we, we, we are tired. I go, get the fuck, let's go. So I, we went backstage, we rehearsed. Make a long story short, after the show, what I normally do, I always sit on the dance floor in front of the stage, and my whole sports team is on the floor watching the show. We're not always drinking or in our room when the GM show is going on, because I always tell them, if the if the guests stay in their room, uh, when we're doing the show, who are we doing the show for? So we need to come on and support them. And at the end of the show, we did the standing ovation, and the GM stand up, and everybody was uh, 700, 800 people standing up, applauding the, the finale of the show. And I remember going backstage, and I think it was Jenna. He said, hey, could you wait here? And I go, sure, let me ask the chief of the village. And when I ask him, he go, you like them? You think them? You feel them? Thank you. So when I hired them, they say they're going to work for, for two weeks with me in, uh, in Morea. Now, I need a tennis instructor and people for snorkeling. I had no idea tennis, Ahama didn't know nothing but tennis. But Hama went and did the tennis, and everybody's coming telling me what a great tennis instructor he was and what a good job he did. So that's to show you in Club Med, you don't need to be a, a, a pro of what you do. It's how you treat people. It's how you communicate. And that's exactly what's When I heard that, I'm like, wow, I got the right kind of guy. So I go over to the, the, the snorkeling shop, and the shark and shark was not, it was kind of messy, you know, the guys who worked there. So when they left, I used to go there and help out and other people go and help out. So when they came in, while I was waiting for somebody to come to do snark, it was coming towards the end of the season anyway. They went, got paint, paint up the shop, put all the numbers of the fins, because before they throw them there, what's your size? They're looking, they got to try them on. No, that's not too small. Oh, that's too big. He had one number. What's your size? Eight. Pull them out. 10, boom, boom, boom. And as a matter of fact, after that, all the clubs stopped doing it. So I said, man, these guys are great to add to my squad. So I said, I'm going to talk to Josie Ariel to bring, listen to the story. <laughs> I said, I'm going to talk to Josie Ariel to bring you guys to talk to us. When I called Jose, Jose said, man, it's kind of late because all the contracts are gone. Now, if they want to come back au pair, I have no problem with it. So I contact them, let them know the situation. They go, man, we don't have no problem. We'll come work up here. And, you know, guys leaving their job and stuff just to come and work for nothing. So 
when we decide getting the to, to come to, to third course, I know they're always going to be there. So what I did, I take an extra week vacation. And when I get to Jose come to pick me up at the airport, and the first thing he said to me, uh, Hensel, where you get those guys from? And when he said it like that, I kind of panicked. I go, what happened? What'd they do? He go, what'd they do? Man, they're killing, man. They're taking it over the village. They're doing a fantastic job for guys doing their first season. This is amazing. Yeah, I asked him, would they learn this stuff? He said, we were two weeks in Tahiti with Hansel. So, and then it goes from there. They work in OPEC. The first contract we got was for Hama at the water ski. So Hama had a contract. And Jose is watching Cheese and Jenna working. So he go, man, I need to get a contract with these guys. We got lazy geos. You have a contract and your guys working, you know, OPEC. And there was a uh, somebody get fired or leave or whatever. So when the contract opened, Jose had a meeting with me, Jenna, and uh, Cheese in the in his office. And he given the situation, I have one more contract for you. Which one of you guys want? So Cheese said, "Give it to Jenna." He goes, uh, "Well, one one of us have a contract. We will share the money, just like that." I've never heard anything like it, and. Um, they start to work in tacos with the first season. After Turks and Caicos, we all, the whole squad, went to Playa Blanca. After that, the whole squad went to St. Lucia. And after that, a lot of them couldn't go to me in San Piper because we was going to the United States. I just take a few people. And then when I went to Lutra to do my last season, Jenna showed up there and did my last season. Your last season was where as chief of sport? In, in Eleuthera, chief of sports. Oh, uh, and what year around was that? Your last year? That was 92, the same year of Hurricane Andrew. Oh, because boy. we okay. had Hurricane Andrew in the club. As I remember, Jenna wanted to see a hurricane. He almost died when the hurricane really hit. Yeah, no, you never, you never want to see one, and 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 not and not for the danger, for, for the cleanup, because you you were you recall the one in in Columbus in October '96. Just uh, oh. I remember Gio's going, "Hey, Greg, who are they going to bring in to clean clean all this up?" I'm like, "You idiot, we're going to clean it up." And, uh, <laughs> it, took, it took weeks. Oh my god, I'm oh, I'm, yeah. I'm scarred from that hurricane just for the work oh, yeah. that <laughs> you know. I'm, but we had one. We had one called uh, Joaquin was about ten times worse than that. Oh really? Uh, yeah. God, oh no, yeah. it's it's horrible. I mean, the yeah. destruction, sure, but the work involved because you still have yeah. to entertain the guests. You oh, know, yeah. Clement Miami would say, "Ah, oh, just a couple of palm trees fell down." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember when they got to Columbus? All the boats were gone. Nothing was. Oh, yeah. The dock, the dock was gone. Five Mess. feet, five feet of sand in the pool. So the scuba yeah. team had to scoop out. <laughs> oh, That's man. amazing. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, Normally, in, in the days world, you know what they do? They right. shut the village down. Okay, we got palm trees. Yeah. Here. Back yeah. in the day, we take care of everything. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, I'm, I'm very. We used to get GMs come and help us work. You kidding? That's, yeah, they had nothing to do, right? There's no yeah. activities. <laughs> yeah, we put, we put them to work. Yeah, okay, go. You, yeah, you go. You go pick up tiles over there. Yeah, <laughs> they were happy to do it. Yeah, happy to do it. Now I want a geo ops and GM to do that. They'll sue. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so you did uh, you did turquoise uh, a few times or just the one time? I did turquoise two times. Okay, I got, did it. I did it with Jose, and then I went back with Ralph Falk, and I actually did the last three months there at Chef de Village. Okay. Give me mm. your, uh, I, can't, I can't ask you, you've been a turquoise, so I have to ask you, you got a, you got a JoJo story? Because, you know, everyone's got a crazy JoJo, yeah. so do you, do, you, do you have one? Yeah, this is the craziest one. Okay. You know, <laughs> well, I know the craziest one. Okay. But uh, there's a few with JoJo, but this is, this is one that was really cool. I'll tell you two, Joe, this story. The first one, real quick. In the information meeting, you tell him, oh, you know, we have a dolphin. The name is Jojo. He'll come up to you. No matter what he does to you, you don't touch him. He'll do all the touching. You don't do no touching. And everybody go, yeah, yeah, dolphin, right. And sometimes Jojo will stay away for a couple of days. You don't see him. So this was, this happened on Saturday. When the people arrive, I tell them the story about the dolphin. Now, we do the Olympic Day on Tuesday. Nobody see the dolphin until Tuesday. So now, you know, when we do the swimming competition, the two teams, the red team, the white team, you put a buoy in the water and everybody swim around. They can put as many people they want in the water to swim around the buoy. And we take first, second, and third, and you get points. So whatever team come in, 
That's how we, we give the score. So sometimes you can have 15, 20 people jump in the water to, to swim around the buoy. When they got to the buoy, Joe J popped right up and everybody starts screaming, shark, shark. <laughs> they come back to the beach and Jose was there. Uh, we dropped on the ground, dying laughing because they really thought it was a shock. They forgot all about the dolphin situation because these people had never been the club man talk was to know about Jojo. That was funny. <laughs> and then the last one was, you know, Danny Glover, the actor? Yes. Well, it was early one morning. I walk on the beach and I see this black guy walking down the beach. And that's, we, the funniest thing about it, the hurricane was, there was a hurricane coming to Turks and Caicos. So what Club Med did, they sent all the GMs to Cancun and all the GOs went to, to Sandpiper. The club says, if Tuck was destroyed, we can't go back. Everybody, so everybody bring all their luggage and everything. They say, everybody will go home and we'll go to another village. But we went, we spent four days in Tuck was and uh, the hurricane passed. There was no real problem. But one night, Jose said, we're going to take everybody to the theater to watch a movie. So we had maybe 80 geos go to a little small theater in town, right? When we get in there, you had maybe two or three people from the area. So we just took over the whole theater. And it was Lethal Weapon 2, which was a very funny movie with that, with, with uh, Danny Glover, Mel Gibson, and guys uh, Joe, Pesci, Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. And Joe Pesci really changed the movie, make it really funny. So everybody's laughing and having a good time. So the hurricane didn't hit Tuck Wars. Everybody go back to Tuck Wars. Two weeks later, I go to the beach about 7, 30 in the morning before breakfast. And I see this guy walking down the beach. And when he get close enough, I go, that's the, I, I said to him, I go, is this Danny Glover? He go, yeah, it's the old man. How you doing? And I go, yeah, man, everything's cool. And I go, what are you doing here? He said, they having a Miss Tuck Wars competition. And they invite me to, to be one of the judge. I said, well, this, this competition will be in Club Mad. So you're going to, he was not living in the Club Mad. But I said, you're going to actually come in Club. And I tell him what I was doing. While we are talking, Joji had pulled up right side the dock. I said, see the dolphin? So we come to the dock and look at Jojo. And Jojo had about a 15-inch cut right across the back, about three or four inches deep. It, it didn't look like a no propeller. It looked like somebody take a knife and just cut him. And he's there, there, shh. He said, you think he's going to die? I go, man, I don't know. And me and Daddy having this big conversation. And I said to him, you know, there's a guy on the island who take care of the dolphins. I go, you know what I'm going to do, uh, Mr. Glover? I'm going to leave. I'm going to go try to call this guy. I will see you when you come into the club as a judge. But I never saw him. I saw him as a judge. I never talked to him after that. And I left. And I called this guy. I think his name was Dan. It was a Dean. No, Dean, 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 I think. Dean. Dean. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I called Dean. I said, Dean, this is what happened to the dolphin. Blah, blah, blah. He go, okay, I got some medication. I got to come bring the medication. He come and he put the medication in the mouth. And before you know it, the thing healed up. And Jojo was back together having sex with divers. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, the one thing they, they, they don't they don't tell you. Um, yeah, I, I swam with him in '94 when I was there, and like I said, the only time I ever swam away from him was because he was. Uh, I was swimming next to him. You know, when he when he knows you, he he he's comfortable with you. He'll swim next to you. Uh-huh. He'll, you'll go to sleep, but one day he's all, he's contorting his body in a really weird way. I'm like, what the heck's he doing? I dive under the water, and he's uh-huh. he's, got, he's got the biggest you know what I've ever seen. It's out. <laughs> I I panic. I start swimming away. The only time I swam away from him. Okay. <laughs> Never yeah. saw anything so big so white Hansel oh boy. Well, what's amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's amazing he normally know women he does it a lot to women when he's yeah. doing like the, the scuba uh, lesson he come right behind and start humping man yeah I've heard yeah I've heard that right right in the right in the like on the sandbar almost like he he'd, oh, yeah. he'd, he'd push him up and some women wouldn't care some would freak out you know yeah. <laughs> oh just just let him finish he, it's okay yeah that's a good job <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That's a geo. Uh, That's a water geo. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Oh man. Oh, okay. that was cool. Memories. Was really cool. What What other yeah. good chief of sports stories you got? Like, uh, get, do you have a favorite village as a chief of sport? Was, was there one? Because you had so many great seasons with so many great geo teams. I don't. It's so be- hard to say which is my favorite village. Did you, uh, did you encounter as chief of sports? Uh, yeah. As chief of sports, I got probably the stuff that we do some awesome stuff. Got to be tough wars. Because you used to we talk to me great, about, about St. Lucia a lot. Lucia too, yeah, yeah, you like St. Lucia because you used to talk a lot. Um, I, I did think. it three times. Yeah, yeah. You had, yeah. A, you had a killer team there at one point, right? Oh. Like a softball team too, I think. I, I, all my teams in St. Lucia was good. Even when I worked there as land sports, I worked two land sports and one as chief of sports. And I did the last, when Pierre Letegagnu left, I did three months of Chef de Village. Well, yeah, that was because uh, we did some great shows there. I, I watched a Hollywood production show at the Universal Studio studio in, in L.A. And when I came to um, St. Lucia, all the hammer and cheese and red them remember this. We had this. You've been to St. Lucia, right? Yeah. Yeah, I worked there. We did the show. Where we set up this whole thing and it's supposed to be is a Miami Vice skit where you have Crockett and Tubbs going after drug dealers. It took us four weeks to put the production together, rehearsal and build a set. So that means all the GM is sitting in the front of the theater. They're looking towards the ocean, which is the pool, right? You remember on, when you look on the right side, we had a little grassy mound and the circus was over there. Yep. So what we did, we built a wall on top of that, that mound. We built a wall out of styrofoam, right? And it makes it look like a real wall. And in the front, we have a set of uh, a warehouse because we did it with sheets and we paint everything and it looked just tremendous with all the lighting. I've never seen no set like that in Club Med. And that was no entertainment doing it. That was a sports team doing it. And some of the guys I remember to go, man, all this work. I go, shut up. <laughs> this is what we do. All right? Just keep your mouth shut. You don't want to work? Go home. <laughs> and they shut up. And we did the whole thing. Jen and I made a helicopter. And this is what make this show so impressive. We have every, it took us about four days to put the soundtrack together. So now you have helicopter uh, uh, sound. You have gunshots. You have bazookas, you have everything going on. So now the show starts and all hell break loose. So when a uh, hammer, we made a bridge right across the pool and we have scuba tanks underneath with holes. So they open in the tank. So water that's coming up. So it looked like bullets hitting the water as hammer running across the bridge. And we get a huge applause just for that because Nobody never did that in the history of Club Man. Nobody did it since. And we run across, and Hammer run across, and they kidnap Hammer. No, no, they got me. They, they I got a photograph of it. They got the gun to me, and these gangsters are beating me up and stuff. And every punch is rehearsed and choreographed, and you can hear it on the sound system, right? So Hammer come running across to rescue me, and they shoot them. So first of all, the helicopter come from... Oh, you see the helicopter rise from above the hill. So me and Jenna, we have a 10-foot blade on the helicopter. So we on the helicopter, we make it out of PVC pipe and plastic and stuff. It looked real. And as the helicopter coming up, all the people see is the propeller coming up. They don't see the helicopter yet. We bring the two guys in the front, two guys in the back, lifting up slowly, and Greg and I end up doing the crank. And you see that it's going faster and faster. We come up the wall. When we come up the wall, the helicopter, I run up on the roof and I have like a, on a like, no, no, I run into a truck, which was on the other side of the pool. In the truck, I got a bazooka. And what I did, I shot the helicopter. And, and it, we had like a launcher from the helicopter, we make it out of rubber bands. And we put flour in a, in a napkin. So when it hit the helicopter, all you see is smoke. And we have a guy blow the fire up so it looked like it's full fire. 
crashing down behind the walls and having come this crash. And then we start shooting people. You see, the pool is right next to the, to the bar. So the roof of the bar, a guy go up there with a shotgun and Hammer shot him. Was, I think it was Scott the Palmer. Shot him and he fall right in the pool and never come back up because we got the scuba guys with the tank on the knee. Let's give him the regulator in the mouth. And they stay under the water for the rest of the show, which would be like another, say, four minutes. They stay under there. And when the, the big explosion and everything, and then it was the end of the show, we all come up. And to this day, I have never seen an applause like that from the GM. We, and anybody can tell you, almost two minutes, applause, standing ovation, the people was going. And the same Geo who telling me there was a lot of work, I ain't gonna call his name. I go, that's why we work hard. That is why we work for the people, for stuff like this. And he go, Hansel, I cannot argue with you. I never been a part of anything like this before Club Man and in Club Man. So that was the one of my uh, cheapest sport story right there. And I also recall you telling me you did another big, big event. You, you, I know you're a wrestling fan. So you, you held this massive WWF, like you, you, you made this whole ring, right? Didn't you like, you did this uh, one, that one day. Awesome. Yeah. That I was mean, awesome. who do yeah, you have you as wrestlers there? Them, right? Yeah. You, you tell me, I remember you telling me these stories. I yeah. remember it was a, yeah. you, you really went into detail with the costumes and you got geos that look like the wrestlers, I think. Uh, was, was this awesome? What we did really, cause that was another one took about six weeks to put together. So every night, we, we you know, during the day when we have free time, we go to the maintenance, we get material, we get, and there was one guy, uh, some rich guy, Goldsmith, who lived outside the club. He went to Mexico City and buy us a few things for the ring. But uh, some, it, it's on somebody's page. I don't remember who it was. And when I look at it a couple of weeks ago, I was blown away how nice it looked. And we do this beautiful ring. Anybody who worked in Playa Blanca, you ever did Playa Blanca, Greg? Yes, sir. Yep. 96. Great. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, the down floor is down and it's around like a little yep. um, ride. And the theater is right over there. So we put the ring right in the middle of the dance floor. And we advertise it for the whole week. WWF coming to uh, to uh, Playa Blanca to do a big show. People go, they're really coming? I go, yeah, they're coming. All the Hulk Hogan, I'm going to be here. We got the people up. So now, Red was one of the best Hulk Hogan I've ever seen anywhere. So he had the long red hair. He put the mace, the, the mustache. He had a real Hulk Hogan shirt. Greg was the ultimate warrior. Uh, I don't remember what cheese was. We had a great tag team. And so we had the first match was Sammy, who was a a uh, little skinny Hawaiian back in the days. I mean, he was a lot buff now when he said he started to train. But back then, he was real slim. And Sammy was this uh, a big uh, Tahitian guy. Danny, his name is. Had a big belly. And so what Danny did, Danny had long Tahitian hair. He shaved his hair in this hallmark style. I didn't even know he did it. He got into the character. And he was such a vicious rasher. They had to bring him into in a cage. So they bring him into the cage. And me and Hammer was the MC. I was Mr. T and Hammy was Jesse the Body Ventura. So we are the MC. And we come on, I had my hair just like Mr. T, Hammer, just look just like uh, Jesse. And so you know, you need rest and need good commentating. And he's really going on. He's going on, oh, T, what do you think about this? I go, eh, yeah, we're going back and forth. When they're bringing Danny out in the cage, he's like shaking the cage. When he come out, his tongue was like all blue and stuff. And he's looking at And he just destroys Sammy. Sammy doesn't stand a chance. Pick him up, slam him. Boom, boom. The fight lasts like two minutes all over. We put Sammy in the stretcher and we take him out. Now we have uh, the ladies. The ladies have uh, a match which was... There's a single two ladies going. They were circus geos. So they're doing flips and stuff. And just fantastic. People can't believe geos was doing this. But we rehearsed a lot. Then, now is the grand finale. So the grand finale is with the ultimate warrior and uh, Hulk Hogan. And it was tag team. So I don't remember the, the, the two other characters. 
the general was the ultimate warrior and um, uh, Red was Hulk Hogan. So it comes down, Hulk Hogan was a bad guy in this. So, you know, when you're coming from the bar and you're walking down the step to go to the, bath, to the bathroom, we have GM who will be part of the show. So I talked to the kid and his father. I said, we're having a wrestling match and I want uh, you guys to be part of it. They go, yeah, man, we'll be part of it. We get the ring. I said, no, you're going to go in the ring. When Hulk Hogan starts walking down the aisle, I want your kid to come up with a piece of paper with a pen to get an autograph. <laughs> so when he when the kid came with an autograph, Red grabbed him by the shirt and pick him up in the air and throw him at his father. And his father catch him. So we went through the whole thing, right? And his father catch him. And everybody started booing Red. And, Boo! <laughs> and then he goes in the ring, tear the shirt off, and we commentating. And it was just another thing. So I say I'll put that the second best entertainment I've seen in Club Mad that wrestling match. It was, a, I mean, those guys were sore for days because you take in this fall and this, I did it myself in other villages. That's why I know how to do it. And it was just, it was just, it was just fantastic. It's awesome, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, you know, I've seen, you know, there's been no Hollywood production like the one you did. I mean, the ones that came after were so much less than the production you put on, you know, like Hollywood production just became like, okay, you're James Bond, you're this, you know, that was it. But yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I would have lo- loved to have been been there when you did that one, man. Oh, you've been great at that. Seen it. Love to have seen that. I, I remember another story, like uh, you tell me if, if this is if this is true, because I remember when, I think when you first went to Cancun, now when they did Mexican Day, I, I think it might've been Wednesday, this was back in the eighties again, you said that, you know how when you go in the restaurant Mexican Day and there's someone with a tequila shot? Mm-hmm. Uh, you said not only were people like going nuts at the entrance, but then Gio's with bottles of tequila would come and then pour it on people's food and people would still eat the food with the tequila, right? Well, uh, that was a little extreme. That happened maybe once or twice. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. My, my real story with that tequila night, you know, you know, that was crazy stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember... Doing the see, and we go from room to room, and we go Arriba, Abajo, Central, Penadentro, yeah, and then you drink down, right? So when after a while I get used to it, so what I start doing, I um I'll go in with a bottle of tequila because I never drink tequila. It's all water in the bottle, and I'll go to the table. These guys from New York think they're tough, and I go to them. I go, you guys want to shoot with me? You know, man, we shoot with you, answer me, here we go. I go, let's go. So I put my shot in, bam, you go, bam. I go, forget about that. I put the ball to my head and I start drinking. I go, you want to do that too? Go ahead. Go, 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 go. <laughs> he drink like half of the ball. He go, ah, ah. <laughs> I start drinking water. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. And I see there were times you had girls after, they start taking all the clothes off in the restaurant, start dancing on the table and shit. I actually see people get so drunk in a restaurant, they could not walk down the step. They start crawling down on the house, they're sliding down the step, getting out of the restaurant. Those days were well, just unbelievable. <laughs> I know. And then you said, and then when you get to the bottom of the stairs, there's a couch there and you'd have a couple, you know, just in plain view, you know, doing stuff on the couch, oh, right? Like uh, <laughs> one, one, one night when we come down right next to the pool, you know, we have the, the restaurant then the pool is right over there. And then the man buys over here. Carry their pilot right here. I go over to him and say, dude, uh, what are you doing? He go, I'm sparking my wife. I go, can you spark her someplace else but right by the pool? <laughs> like go spark in the room, the beach. Yeah, everybody's out here. Yeah, oh, there's some man, we're just having fun. You're a party buzzer. And the wife tell me, leave us alone, Hansel. Get out of here. Leave us alone. I go, you know what? You guys do whatever you want. I just left. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Okay. Uh, the crazy time. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, I, I remember when we had the geo reunion, when we went there and signed Piper, the very first geo reunion, and we just took over the whole place. And we had, uh, GOs will come to me and said, why can't they stop all of this stuff? This is a lot of fun. 
what? Why are we not doing this? I go, it's a new club, man. Man, they want to go in a different direction. Yeah. Lawsuits you know, too. So. Lawsuits too ruined a lot of fun, though. Eh? Uh, yeah, but you what... know uh, what they do when you get a when you get a lawsuit. Let's say McDonald get a, a lawsuit because somebody gets spilled uh, with coffee. And they say it's too hot, and they get a yeah. million dollars, whatever. Yeah, McDonald don't stop selling coffee. That's what right. they do, <laughs> they just set up a situation where the coffee is never too hot ever again, and have it set up where some the cup will go into the cup where it cannot spill, whatever. They, they don't put a, stop they, doing and the they, coffee, and they put a warning on the lid telling you coffee is Absolutely. hot. Absolutely, yeah, coffee is hot. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah. So if you spill yourself, you go in front of the judge. The judge said, "Did you see the sign? Uh, hot coffee. <laughs> Be careful. Don't spill. So you can't spill. So these are the things. And the more and more we have good geos leaving Club Med, and then you have new geos come in. The shit just get watered down, watered down. When I look, because I go in the club all the time in Columbus, and I'm looking, well, lately we had some old school chef in the village, so you see a lot of the old, but we had some time ago. What the fuck are they doing? I, it was just, they do something called Music Factory. All right? It's supposed to be like lip sync contests. And I tell them straight up, if I do a lip sync contest, and you do a music factory, you will never do music factory again. All right? But we never really, really did it like that because I was not a geo no more, so I don't really care what they do. But um, it's sad. I always tell people, if this club man right now was existing back in the day, I would have never been a geo. But if I was a geo, I would probably do one, two years, and I would have been it. Well, yeah, you were there in the, the heyday, the glory days. I mean... Uh... Man, I did 14 you, years. Yeah. Well, yeah. When I, when I met you, so your last village is a, a cheap of sport was 92 and I meet you in 96 and you're the village photographer, correct? Right. Right. Wow. Yeah. We, we, we met in Columbus as a photographer, you doing snorkeling and picnics and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then I don't know who asked who, but, or if you needed a new training partner, but I was, um, I was recruited and, uh, you know, I needed a guinea pig. Yeah, boy, <laughs> boy, I, I still I tell people our shoulder workout back then, and they like get out of here, you know, like <laughs> kill them, wake up. I don't know if you recall one time we did a, uh, I think we did a shoulder and chest. I was doing um, bicycling that season. So it was like 97, 98 and uh, mm. it's probably not there. So I was riding my bike to where the bicycles were by tennis. And there used to be a palm tree that would come over the path. It would angle over, you know, mm -hmm. you, you weren't going to hit it if you were walking, but if you're on a bike. I was lost in thought. I was probably trying to recuperate from that medieval workout you put me through. Mm. And I hit the tree full blast, fell off backwards off my bike. But because my, my shoulder and chest were so engorged with blood because of <laughs> your workout, I wasn't hurt. If I hadn't worked out with you, I would have been in the hospital, but that's how hard I hit that tree. <laughs> but you know what? I know that that tree is when, when you, um, when you, coming right to go towards the tennis court right? yes yeah it comes right. out over the path it angles over the path but right. if, you're, but if, right. you're, if you're on a bike you're high enough to hit it but i wasn't paying attention i was trying to like <laughs> catch my breath because we would do 20 minute workouts but in those 20 minutes it was the most pain you'd ever want to go through okay it was like oh, heavy, yeah. heavy duty right i think you call it was it non -stop. you go i go you go I yeah go. And yeah you, you're out of it my favorite yeah. is active rest. So I, I, I said, Hansel, I can't, I can't uh, bench press 225. I'll spot you for nine, but then yeah. I have to, my rest is spotting you. Okay. So there's no yeah. rest. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I think you called it. I think you called it act, active <laughs> rest. Okay. That that's my favorite expression of all time. Active rest. Okay. You know that tree, Greg? You know that tree? Yeah. Right is, it, is it still there? Okay. No, no, let me explain that tree. It's okay. always the story. Now, I do the bicycle rental at Club Med. You know that same building where yes. the bikes used to be right there? Yeah. Where by the tennis court? Yes. They, they, they enclosed, it was just like a cabana. Now they closed three sides in because I asked them to do it so to protect my bikes. So now I do the bicycle rental for the Club Med and the geos, the GMs, I would meet them at nine o'clock. They would call me and say, Hemsel, you have 10 bikes for nine o'clock. I go, okay. So, like, you know, quarter to nine, I'm there checking all the ties, make sure everything's good. When the GM come, I do the briefing and just let them go by themselves. They just go to the beach or whatever, and then they come back at two o'clock, another group went out. So, 
every time GMs go out, they got to keep ducking that that same tree. What are you talking about? <laughs> no. I, okay. go to, I go to chief of maintenance. I said to the chief of maintenance, uh, I think it was some Mexican guy. I said, because no, they don't never want to cut down coconut trees. Never. No. No, I know. I said, I, I'm surprised a hurricane didn't take out that one with all the hurricanes yeah. you have. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know, but, but before the hurricane take it out, okay. I said, we need to cut that tree down. He goes, no, 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 no. We can't cut no tree. Tell the GMs right on the other side. Because, you know, you have two entrances. You're going to roll towards the tree, and then you can go further on the outside. Remember? Yes, yes. Right. So tell the people go on the other side. We don't cut down the tree. You speaking about hurricane, right? <laughs> I, I don't remember what hurricane it was. Not a big one, you know. Maybe it was about a hundred miles an hour, or whatever. The next day I go, boom! The coconut tree snap in half. I said, "Thank you very much. I never got to worry about it again." I go, you see, <laughs> the hurricane is working for me. Now cut it down because it's snapping in half. Cut it down, and they cut it and clean it up, and it's no longer there. <laughs> That's funny. Well- uh, yeah, let's get back to your bikes because I've I've seen your photos and videos. Now I'm a little irked because you have very very fat tires on your bikes. Is yeah. that because because when I did the riding there, I I was I used to yell tell GMs do not put the bike on the side of the road because you had these burrs on the side of the road any everywhere that would just puncture the tire. So is that because are those tires so big and fat because of those burrs? <laughs> That is one of the reasons. And as you say that, okay. that is the one of the, the second thing I say in my briefing. You okay. got to stay on the left-hand <laughs> side of the street. Do not put your bike as, as inviting as the grass might look on the side of the road. Yes. Do not ever put your bike. And you know what they do? What? They put the bike oh, on the side. It's crazy. You know, Sometimes they wouldn't get a flat tire, but when they come back to the village, you see them all in the tire. Yeah. And I don't say, guys, how do you get these uh, stickers in your tire? Oh, it was a... Uh, I said, no. It's the only way you have to go in the grass. But they never listen. No. So uh, what I started doing is putting like an extra tube on the lining inside so it just stays the grief of doing tires all the time. So it kind of limited a little bit. The fat tires come along. When I'm, I saw them uh, online. Mm -hmm. I wanted to change my bikes. But when I saw from sideways, the tire looked big, but it looked that fat. So when I bring them in, I go, man, this is not what I'm looking for. These motorcycle tires. So my friend who's helping me put the bikes together, say, Hansel, because I wanted to send them back to Florida. He said, let's put one together and let's see how it rides. And then you can make your decision. I go, good. We take one out, a man one, put it together. And you know, the tennis shop is there. He ride the bike around the tennis shack and come back to me. And he had this huge smile on his face. He go, Hanson, you got to ride this bike. When I jump on, you feel like you're in a lazy boy chair, just moving. And it's not, it's light. It look heavy, but it's light. I go, man, this is awesome. We put them all together. When the first set of GMs come, they go, look, these tires, the big tires. And I had... Six other with small tires. So I said to them, you know, I have uh, 16 of big tires and I got six of small tires. What I'd like for you to do, just take a try with both and see. So they take the small one first, ride around. When they jump on the big tires, they go, I take this one. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I take this one. So after that, I never had any problem. That's how I get with the big tires. Number one, it looked nice. They're very rugged. They can last me like four years before I can change bikes. So that's the reason. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's go back to Clement a bit. Let's talk about LP. So when I met you in 96, because I, I had LP on the show and we talked about you, uh, you would always mention LP. So his My name, brother. yeah, I never met him. He drove me crazy. The stories that you told drove me crazy. And I remember like you told me that when you first met LP, he said, thank you for training me. You never met LP before. You never trained him. You're like, what's this kid talking about? Because you trained Hammer, Jenner, you know, cheese. They trained LP, is that right? So in a sense, you train I LP. Can, is... I, I'm, it's amazing that you remember that story. I do, I do. I, I, I was in the, my, doing my, I had set them up, all my photos in the reception area, and all of a sudden this, you know, blonde, young, 
feisty looking dude come up to me and goes, you handsome Moss? I go, yeah. He goes, he grabbed my hand and said, thank you very much for training me. I was like, there's another crazy white dude, probably drunk. I go, what are you talking about, man? He goes, you know Hammer? You know cheese? Yeah. I go, yeah. He go, well, you train them and they train me. I, then, then I start to know what he was talking about. Yeah, he said, I was in Cancun with them now. I'm here. I'm getting here to work with you, man. Anything you need, you just ask me. So he said, uh, he said, you're gonna go on a sunset cruise? And I said to him, you know, I'm not gonna go on a sunset cruise because uh, there's not a lot of people. I just do my shoot right around the pool. I'm not gonna waste my time. He goes, no, 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 no. We're gonna have more people going on the boat. I'm, I'm doing publicity for it. So I go, okay, no problem, LP. And normally the reason why I never go on a the boat, they have 10, 12. If they got 12, that's a big crowd. So when I went down to the dock, to the boat, I started to see all these people. And I see LP talk to them up by the sea center area. And I was on the boat with my friend Pedro and we had, uh, Louise was the bartender. And we were on the boat waiting. I go, Pedro, look all these people, man. I go, this new guy, LP, you probably know what the hell he's doing. So LP walk all the people down to the dock. When he gets to the boat, he start holding their hand and putting them on the boat. Captain Pedro was there taking the people's hand and they go in the boat. As the people going into the boat, uh, LP said, oh, my name is uh, LP, uh, uh, what is your name? And the, the people said, uh, uh, John and Diane from uh, New York. Uh, what's this one here? Bill and uh, Judy. Uh, and everybody named, and they go on the boat. So I go, oh, that's nice. He's introduced himself to the guests. The most impressive thing I ever seen in Club Med by one geo, and I've never seen anything after it. LP, the boat's still the dock. LP said, can I have anybody's attention? So he had, the front of the boat had a lot of people. And he stand up, up by the, um, uh, next to the captain. He goes, uh, my name is LP. This is Hansel, a photographer, my great friend. LP just met me for two days. <laughs> he, go, <laughs> he goes, my other friend is Pedro, the boat captain. And Louis is the bartender. Now let me introduce you to everybody in the boat. And LP went everybody name and city and country where they came from. He missed one city. He said, from New York, don't know me from Connecticut. That was the only one he missed. I go, when I saw it, I go, but he didn't miss the name. He just missed the, the instead of saying Connecticut, he said New York. But everybody, we had 48 people on that boat. And LP remember everybody's name, all right? And then we went out to the sunset and uh, we do all the photos. And I, it was a regular occurrence for me to go with him every time because that was unbelievable. Wow. You ever worked with LP? Uh, no, no, I never did. But when I finally met him in Montreal, I said, you made my life hell. And he starts laughing. I go, why? Because I worked with Hansel Moss for two and a half years. I had to hear your name. Because every now and then you would tease me. You'd be like, hey, Greg, how many names did you memorize today? I'm there. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe one. You go, LP, LP would have memorized 30 names by now. Way to go. So, but I listen, man, I listened to everything you said. You said, lift this. I lifted it. You said, do this. I did it. So when I went to Martinique after my season with you in, in 96, I went to Martinique. I, for water aerobics, I put everyone in a circle and I said, I'm going to do what LP does. And I started memorizing names. Obviously it didn't come as easy, <laughs> you know, wow. me, but, but I worked at it. Cause I, I, I had your, I had your voice uh -huh. in my head all the time, man. That's why I became a chief of sports, man. It was because of you. I want to be like you. That's great, bro. You know, I'm very bad with names unless it's a name that is easy to remember. So what I did in club made my thing, with name, how I eliminate it, I give the GMs nicknames. I see a guy look like Kenny Rogers, say, hey, Kenny Rogers. I see a guy look like Beaver. I go, hey, there's Beaver. Hey, John Travolta. Hey, there's Rocky. And I give everybody a name. Oh, Madonna. Oh, shit. You know? <laughs> and there was one woman, 
I give a name. Out of all the names I give, right, there was only one person who was upset with me. I call a fat lady Roseanne Barr. Uh -oh. And she went off of me. <laughs> she goes, ah, you, you, because I'm fat, you think I'm Roseanne Barr? I said, I'm sorry. What is your name? And she told me the name. I said, from now on, that's what I will call you. And when I see her, I call her by the, the name that she gave me. And that was the end of it. But what I'm saying in Club Med, the way Club Med changed, normally what I'm supposed to do now, because one woman get upset, I'm supposed to stop giving people nicknames. No way. And I continue. So I was like 99% right on. One person complained about it because majority of the people, if I'm giving somebody a name, their wife, their, their kids, their parents start calling them the same name I call them. So <laughs> it was unbelievable. Some guys' names stick forever. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. No, that's yeah. true. Man. Whew. All right. Cool. Um, is there anyone like, I mean, I mean, I know you can't name everyone because you've worked so long. I mean, other than geos we named, like, is there any like chief of villages or chief of sports you worked with you liked? I mean, I, I know you mentioned, uh, you know, Hammer and Josie Aliel. I mean, what, I mean, is there anyone like, like chief of sports and chief of villages uh, that worked with impress me? Or, or, yeah, or even, even regular geos, like, is someone you worked with? I know you mentioned Red too, but as a, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to leave anyone out, but, you know, but yeah. you have so many names. Uh, you know. uh, I could go on for yeah. all day, but then yeah, I'll yeah. give you a few. Okay. I'll give you a few special people. Okay. That same guy, Amal, who I work with, I learned a lot from him. I know he loved me. What else we got? We have Jose, of course, Miriam. A guy by the name of Terry Pika, he's all chef de village. And we have a lot of old school geos know he was my chief of sports. His name was Dede Lantini. You know, he passed away a few years ago. All right. Uh, also, Michel Berger was my chief of sports and my chef de village. One of the most energetic people I know. Uh, never do no drugs, always drinking water, but he looked like he was on coke all the time. That's how much energy I always had. And Gio's, Angie was great. I, I'll tell you guys an Angie story. Angie was with a Gio that was not very nice to her. She there was a couple. And Angie's a very emotional person. She's one of the sweetest people I know. And Angie, ooh, this really disturbed her. So she was not being a good Gio. All right. And I've seen her operate. As I, work, I think I worked with her in um, uh, Sonora Bay. She was hostess or whatever. And, and I know who she was from that season. But with this situation that she was going through, it was not good for her. So I remember when I, uh, and when, so when um, one day she's supposed to be doing aerobic class. And people asking, where well, there's no aerobic, there's no aerobic. So when I went, I went into the theater and Angie was just sitting in the theater in the corner, just, you know, like kind of slump over. So I said, Angie was up, you okay? She said, oh, not really. I said, people looking for aerobics, you know, we're around, what's happening? So she said, oh no, I was, my head was not too clear. Blah, blah. So make a long story short, I didn't give Angie a great report. But I explain in the report that she is a great person. She's a great geo, but she had some, some personal issue that took away from her job. And if she could straighten herself out, she would be fantastic. And so now I leave and I'm in Tuckwars with a guy called Ralph Falk. All right? So... My, I don't have a land sport. Patricia Flores was in the New York office and she called me. She said, Hansel, I have no other land sport. The only land sport I have available is Angie. And Angie told me, she is no way you gonna let her work with her with the season that she did in uh, St. Lucia. I said, send Angie. To, to talk to us as soon as possible. He go, really? 
I go sell them as soon as possible. So maybe two or three days, Andy shows up in the village. And when Andy shows up, I, I meet her in the parking lot and I see a different person. She had that smile, Angie was back. And I said, uh, Angie, you don't gotta worry about the water exercise. She arrived in the village about 10.30 in the morning. I go to water exercise at 11 30. I said, I'm gonna do the water exercise. And um, you, you could do it at one at 3.30 and then, or well, you could start tomorrow. She goes, no, Hansel, no, no, no. I'm going to my room and I'll be there at that pool at 11 to do an exercise class. I'm ready to go. I go, really? Sure enough, she was there because we already had the, the regular music. So she just tell the sound engineer, hit the music and the music start. And she go in the pool, did her exercise and she did a killer season with me, killer. So I gave her a good report, blah, blah, blah. She left. And these stories continue. She come to Columbus in charge of entertainment. And she's there, so I'm doing the photography. So if there's any little help she need, I'm always there. You know, to, she in my country and she in the club. So it, what could go wrong? Nothing. And one night, unbeknown, the chief of the village came out. There was two geos, chief of sports and chief of entertainment. And he was chief of entertainment. And we had white night outside the pool. And he said, I have a very surprise to tell everybody. May I have your attention, please? Everybody quiet, all the forks, knives stop. Everybody's looking at him. And he said, I want to congratulate Angie. And I can't remember the other Gio's name. He said, they are promoted to Chef de Village. And everybody give a huge round of applause. I grab Angie, we hug. And after I done with my photos, I break everything down. I say, Angie, let's jump in my car. Let's go over to my house. I live three minutes or less drive from the club. You know where the gym was? My house is right in the back. Yeah. And uh, we go uh, to my house. We sit down and we start to talk. And I start counseling Angie. I say, Angie, when you become Chef of Village, this is what you have to do, you know, blah, 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 blah. I have to say exactly what we talk about. But we talk about, you know, the, the life. I've never been Chef de Village, but I've been interim Chef de Village about seven times. So I know what is all, what does it entail? So she said, okay, this is great, no problem. And Angie went and she, well, I think she was a very successful Chef de Village. I'm very proud of Angie. Yeah, I was uh, with you guys that season. That was the Y two K. So I, yeah, I was there for that. Oh yeah, and, the season. Uh, okay, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, then she was my chief in uh, in Paradise Island in uh, two thousand two, two thousand three. So yeah. You remember the other guy who became chef? Yeah, of yeah, Vincent, Vincent. Oh yes, Vincent. Yeah, because right. I, I met him during my when I had my chief of sports stage in Opio. He was the chief of sport in in Opio. So when uh -huh. I saw him, so I, that's I knew him from there. So uh, yeah, that was, a, but that was a, that was a good team. I thought that that season, the, the 99, 2000 at Columbus, cause I had been to Columbus two years, you know, with you before, but I thought that team was uh, pretty solid. And, and Duda, Duda, who was a lifeguard at the pool is a chief of village. I mean, uh, we had Tarzan. I mean, I thought there was a lot, a lot of talent on, on that. Team. Oh, a lot of talent, a lot of talent. Yeah. You, you and Ta you, I think you and Tarzan, Everybody thought you guys were brothers. Yeah, well, he was on yeah. vacation when I arrived, and everyone was slapping me in, on the back, going, "Hey, Tarzan!" And I'm like, "Who's <laughs> Tarzan?" And, and when I met, when I saw him I, when he came back from vacation, I went, "Oh, okay." Mm. <laughs> but much, much goofier than me, you know. I mean, what, what, what a guy! Though. No, I mean, he's he's, he's a personality. That guy. <laughs> that was a pretty good team you guys had there. Yeah, no, it was. It was. The GMs loved him. I, they didn't have, you know, I had my, what should have been my second season as chief of sport, but you know, in the winter mm -hmm. they don't have. So they said, all we got is Columbus. We got archery. I go, there's archery in Columbus. They go, yeah. They go, okay, you know what? I want to see Hansel. I'll do, I'll do archery. But then Philippe, Philippe, the chief of village said, wait a minute, Greg's the chief of sport. I don't want him at the, at the butt end of the, of the resort. So he made me mm -hmm. like head, head of land sports. So, you know, and I got to work out and with you again, another season. <laughs> so it was beautiful because yeah. land sports, you know, you, you just had like a few hours, a few minutes between, you know, events. And we just go down to the gym and bust it out and come back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. then when, and then when I got, and then when I came there the third time, I see there's two lifeguards at the pool. You know, how small the pool at Columbus is. I'm like, mm -hmm. two lifeguards. So, yeah, there's a bit of some changes there. But uh, always, 
I tell everyone that was my, you know, one of the best time, you know, most beautiful people. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I used to complain, why am I getting sent back a lot? But you know what? I loved it. I, I never felt more at home than, than oh, I did yeah. there, you know, and I'm, and I'm happy because it just became, it came in the news. Uh, the good news is your uh, Columbus is reopening in November of this in, year? No, October, October, October 22nd. That's right. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think that's going to be uh, sold out for sure. I mean, people... yeah, they, they, they book already for the, I think the first yeah. two months or whatever. And then the rest is like 85%. Full. Yeah. When you, when I think I, when, they're all be full. Yeah. When I, when I did my two years there, like I, you, I, you never see so many re- repeat visitors at a club med than you do at Columbus. I mean, you There's stay no here, you're, you're, like no, you're going to see people constantly that you met just, you know, three months before. <laughs> yeah. Well, all my friends on Facebook who, um, who normally come to Club Med, they all say, hey, we already signed up. We'll be seeing you October, yeah. November, December. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great. Yeah. What I'm trying to do, Greg, I want to add another excursion where I have uh, some Polaris bike. Those uh, you have, you can, they can fit four people. And I'm going to try, I'm working, putting all my stuff together right now to, 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 to purchase them. And I want to organize three different excursion one would be around the island when Sharon and i went around the island just like everybody i take around the island they have the same reaction blown away i took her to about 12 gorgeous beaches today so what i want to do with, with the buggies one excursion will be just an island tour with swimming at one beach the next excursion will be island tour with snorkeling. That's a different price. The next one will be island tour, snorkeling, and lobster lunch. I just took, uh, Sharon is going to post some photos, a uh, video uh, on her page. You can check her page of my bar. I have a sports bar right next to the gym now. And it's right on the beach. So what I normally do, I'll have the GMs and I'll have uh, lots of lunch and they just walk right down the beach and we have a nice little feast. And the GOs, after they get off at night, they'll just walk right down the beach. And I, this is where they have all the geo parties and stuff at my bar. So what I want to do is do the island tour and I, I bring all the people, the table is right on the deck. You could take a rock from the deck and throw it right into the water. And um, I'm going to have them do the lobster lunch there. If it's cruise ship or club med people, they eat. And after I take them back to the club, we'll take them back to the ship. That's my goal for when everything opens up for this year coming. And do any of these excursions stop at Club Ed for drinks? Is Club Ed still there? Please say yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's, still, he's still there? Oh, man. Yeah, but the, the, the club, because what we do, what we have now is not only Club Med now. No, I mean, uh, I mean, I meant, I meant club, club Ed. Do you remember Club Ed? Oh, Club Ed, no, that's gone. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah, the hurricane knocked that one down. Oh no, where's Ed? Where's Ed now? Ed, Ed, <laughs> Ed passed away too. Oh, rest in peace, Ed. Yes, yeah. because nobody really, you know, his kids and they all live in Nassau. And nobody he was, really he, he was them. closer to the lighthouse, wasn't he? Like it, it was. I no, mean, he was about. He was about, if you're riding a bicycle, mm-hmm. yeah. I would say maybe about seven minutes from the lighthouse. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we just, I just uh, took Sharon up to the lighthouse to show it. She was blown away. Go up and see the whole entire island. Yeah. yeah. Because that would be part of my, of my tour also. And um, I'm looking forward to this. Because when I did it with a bicycle, the people were just blown away. Because for the first time, we had three different cruise ships coming to Sabro right after the pandemic. So they wanted a place to go. And they were going, why the hell are we going to Nassau and Freeport? We're supposed to be coming to a place like this because there's so much activity. When they come in, they had one excursion and take them to another island to have a uh, lobster lunch and food and music. Then they had my bank tour. They had deep sea fishing. They had bird watching. They had this the island tour with, with buses, people taking them around. Uh, also, they had uh, scuba diving. If anybody wanted to go scuba, they got to go. These all the events the cruise ship had. And they didn't have more than like 200 people on the ship because, you know, it was the pandemic was going on. Everybody made masks. Nobody could have come on who was not vaccinated and stuff. 
but they're getting ready to start again in September. And they they were so thrilled about my ride. I mean, every time the, the, the ship people would text me back and said, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it because everybody's just blown away. I take them to some beach. You know, we ride by the Columbus Monument, Greg? Yeah. The minute we get to that wide open, now they have a seawall. They sort of, the, the stuff doesn't come over. You have big wave. You okay. know that area, with kind of wide open area. The road is right next to the water. Yes. Man, every time they get there, they go, wow. And then I take them past Columbus Beach, and I have a nice little private beach. I normally do my lobster lunch sometime. I stop doing it because it's too much work. And I would take them there, and they go, wow. It looked like a swimming pool with sand. And everybody, the first time I did it, nobody had been sued. And most of the people, like the guys who had like shorts on, they jump in. And I had like three ladies wearing their underwear. I could go out. This is Bahamas. Go enjoy yourself. That's, they were so inviting. And the temperature was just unbelievable. So that's what I want to get going. Well, let me give a shout out to your, your gym and bar. Because I was there at the opening of your gym. Why don't you tell the folks who are, who are visiting Columbus Isle? Like what, what, what's the name of your bar and gym that they should look for? Well, uh, uh, the bar name is The Zone. But I'm going to change the name. Okay. Uh, to, to I be- kind of close now while the club is closed because uh, you no know, things are a little slow. I'm going to call it Hensel's when it opens up. Nice. And what's and, your, your gym? Yes. And what's your gym and, called? Uh, yeah, go go on on um, on Sharon Page. Mm-hmm. She posts some stuff of the gym inside. I got a lot of work to do. I got to do some construction to the outside and stuff like that. But uh, that'll all come in the next couple of months. Is it still Flex, and, Flex Gym? Is that the name? Flex Gym. Flex, Flex Gym is the gym. Okay. Yeah, I remember when yeah. you uh, when you opened that in that mm-hmm. uh, that 2000 season. So I, I was there for that. That was nice. We, we still do. We got. I have some new equipment, but what I add to my gym a lot of rubber band exercises. Yeah, I, 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 I see your videos and uh, I, I, I feel for those ladies, man. You're, you're putting it to them there early in the morning, man. They, they keep showing up. So hats mm-hmm. on to them, man. They, they, must like, my, they must like pain. Huh? I have a group of ladies. They're school teachers. Four of them, they come at five o'clock in the morning, uh, three days a week. God. And I have another two ladies who are also teachers. They come at six o'clock, five days a week. And then everybody else is like seven and later on. The big class that I do, the club is closed. A lot of my uh, students left the island and stuff, but they all be back pretty soon. I, my big class, I can have anything between 12 and 14 people. And I do like circuit training with them, you know? So it works fine. Oh, great, man. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I can't wait for the reopening of uh, Columbus. That's going to be awesome, man. Greg, I want to tell you, man, uh, it's a pleasure being on with you. Uh, a great friend. I talk about you all the time. Me too. And this is something great you're doing. And I don't know why any geo want to turn this down. I mean, <laughs> it's uh, something fantastic. And I'm well, happy you're doing this, man. Well, maybe after they hear yours, I'm going to get more and more people coming up. To me. <laughs> I hope. <There> you <laughs> That's the reason why I want to go on Hemsworth is talking all the club business. <laughs> 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 oh man well i'm not gonna say a goodbye i'm just gonna say see you later but thank you so much for sharing your story uh, with us here today hansel it's been awesome no problem i'll talk to you later my brother all you right be safe. Sir, don't don't hang Bye-bye. up don't hang up right away but we'll see you all next week bye <laughs>